Welcome to Lesson 3 of Aim Light. In Lesson 3, we're going to talk about social media. Before we get into the meat of Lesson 3, let's do an exercise recap of the day and the life of. At the end of Lesson 2, you are prompted to download a PDF of an exercise that we affectionately call the day in the life of. Now this particular exercise is looking at customer personas. So what did you find in this exercise? Was there anything that stuck out to you? Now, if I were doing this exercise for C4 Atlanta, here's some things that I would have come up with, and I'm not gonna go through every box on the matrix, just a few. So my customer persona's name is Amy. Amy is an artist and she lives in the city of Atlanta. Amy is about 37. A lot of our artists are between uh, the ages of, of 30 and 50. We have a lot of artists that also are um, our older artists um, or later career professionals. But for Amy, she's 37. Now Amy has a couple of jobs. And she has her job um, in the studio where she creates art. But Amy also works a job um, doing some nannying on the weekend in her neighborhood. Um, she works as a nanny. And then Amy also works at a restaurant during the week. Now, if Amy is typical of most artists in the United States, unfortunately, Amy's going to be making less than $25,000 a year and doesn't have access to really good health care through any work. Um, she has little money to spend on professional development. So do you have Amy in your mind? Why does it matter that I know that information about Amy? Well, I've identified a couple of problems and a couple of challenges. You see, C4 Atlanta is an art service organization and we provide professional development for artists. Now already, Amy doesn't really have the money to interact with what it is that we do. I wanna take a pause here and say that this is for C4 Atlanta. This isn't indicative of, of what your persona is going to be like. So if you found that what it is that you're offering, that there's not a whole market for, you may want to think about finding a new market, not changing your work, but finding a new market. For us at C4 Atlanta, part of our mission is accessibility and helping out people who may not have the money for ongoing professional development. Again, that's why we're a nonprofit. So how do we, how do we answer that? Throughout the year, C4 Atlanta raises money uh, for scholarships for artists to take our classes, at, usually at no cost to them, as long as they can demonstrate that they have a need. The way that we message to our donors, which is one of our target markets, of the, the need for this is because we have the knowledge of people like Amy who need the resources to help elevate her career. And hopefully, hopefully what we can do is help Amy find a way to earn more money through her art making and eventually make more money overall. That would be great. In the meantime, what we really want to do with Amy is help provide her that professional development that will help her to continue her art career so she doesn't give up and she doesn't feel left alone. You see how all of those are interconnected? We have to know who our, our customer is so we know their challenges so we can fix those challenges through our operations and through our offerings, but also so we can message the challenges to donors and we can message effectively and genuinely to people like Amy so she knows that we have a program for her. Other things that it affects is where we're located. Our offices are located in the heart of downtown, only a block away from public transportation. That's really important to us. Again, we're mindful of the way that we use this messaging. We're mindful of letting people like Amy know that we are going to work with her. And we use that in our social media. We use that on our website. We use that in our print literature. And we use that in our grant applications for funding so we can help people like Amy. So now we're gonna move on. I hope that exercise was help, helpful. If you ran into a challenge with it, feel free to email me and we can talk through it a little bit. My email is jessica, it's J-E-S-S-Y-C-A at c4atlanta.org. Let me know what you're thinking. 
So we're going to talk a little bit about the different social media platforms. We won't have time to dig into every single one of them, but I would encourage you to explore uh, the social media platform that works for you. And that's what we're going to talk about. How to identify the right social media platform and what are you really looking to measure? Now, I'm going to tell you this right away. I'm not a social media expert. There's really no such thing. I mean, social media changes so much. It's hard to really become an expert in this area. But there are some tips and tricks that we can discuss. I do use social media. I'm an avid social media user, and I believe that it has the power to have effective impact. So I'm going to talk a little bit about social media goal setting. What is your goal? The goals that I'm going to go over are realistic goals that really feed right into one another. I want to stop real quick and give credit to Beth Cantor. Um, you can learn more about Beth Cantor at BethCantor.org. That's B-E-T-H-K-A-N-T-E-R dot org. Part of this uh, piece right here, the reach, engagement, action, and dollars, is used under a Creative Commons license, and it um, the attribution goes to the Measuring the Networked Nonprofit, and this is uh, created by Beth Cantor. So, um, wonderful resources on BethCantor.org. I would encourage you to uh, check it out. So let's talk a little bit about goal setting in social media. First, we have reach. Now, if <laughs> let's use Facebook as an example. If you don't have a business page for uh, on Facebook for your creative offering, well, then chances are you're not going to have a whole lot of reach. You may have a personal page and you may have a thousand friends and that's great, but that's going to be muddled a little bit there um, with uh, your personal self and identification and your brand identification. So I would encourage you if you haven't set up a, a Facebook business page to go ahead and do so. And the first thing you want to do with that is you want to have reach. You want to have people like what it is that you do. And, and, and honestly, Facebook makes it really easy to invite people. Same with Twitter and, and same with some of these other things. One of the ways to get reach is to actually follow other people, comment on things. If there's a blog that you like, comment on it, um, uh, interact and, and, and spread uh, your message as far as wide as you can and, and increase your reach. If you don't have reach, it's going to be very difficult to graduate to people purchasing from you uh, via social media. The second piece is engagement. So let's assume now that you have some reach. You have 500 followers. Great. Congratulations. Good for you. Now, are those followers actually interacting with your brand at all? Are they tweeting with you? Are you in conversations with them on Facebook? Are they commenting on things? Are they liking things? Uh, one great way to measure engagement is uh, comments and shares. Shares are great on uh, Facebook and Twitter, um, retweeting, things like that. Um, that's, that's part of the engagement piece. And again, you gotta have that engagement before you get to using social media as a sales tool. Because at the end of the day, that's not really what it's for. Um, social media is a way to um, engage people meaningfully and authentically, believe it or not. <laughs> um, the next is action. You know, are you getting people to do something? Are you getting them to visit your website? You know, do you have a website? If you don't have a website, get a website. But one of the things that social media can do is act as a funnel to your website. And, and going back to lesson two, we can measure this through Google Analytics. So you can measure the effectiveness of your social media strategy by connecting that to Google Analytics and seeing like, are people coming through Facebook, for example, or Twitter? Um, for C4 Atlanta, people come through our blog, but number one, hands down, they come through Facebook in terms of a, a social media funnel. Um, that's really important for us to gauge because um, we may not spend ad dollars on Twitter, but we definitely see the impact of spending ad dollars from time to time on Facebook. So dollars, what does that mean? Dollars means sales. It means getting people to purchase something from you to have a transaction. Now, this really means driving them to a site where you have something like PayPal or Stripe or Square or whatever merchant service you want to use to get people to purchase from you. Or, or you're, if you're, there, you're getting them to come to your box office and buy a ticket, or you're getting them to come to your gallery opening. These are all, um, uh, this is all the funnel that you want to move people through, is that reach, engagement, action, dollars. And just because you're getting to dollars doesn't mean 
that you don't continue to uh, expand your reach and expand your engagement. And remember, it's, it's really important to not only take care of the patrons and customers that you have, but to continue to reach more patrons and customers um, so you have more money at the end of the day uh, and more impact, more people collecting your work, more people interacting with your message and seeing your show, whatever it is that you're doing, it's always great to um, continue to grow that as you expand in your art career. The biggest question people have is, what is the right social media platform for me? So remember back in lesson two when we talked a little bit about demographic or psychographic information? So where are people? Where are you reaching them? And, and this is a, a nice um, breakdown of content um, uh, about social media users across platforms. I think what's really important to, um, to note is that um, people are, are, are across many platforms, but it doesn't mean that you have to be on every single platform. Eventually you could get there and that's great, but really start uh, thinking about where are your customers gonna be? Where's that target market? And go to that platform. Um, it takes a little bit of research. I want to mention that publishing exactly the same content across all the platforms you own is a waste of your time and energy. Each social media network has its own rules and possibilities. Uh, this is uh, why, depending on your goals, you should adjust the communication to each platform separately. Take into consideration an audience and a character of and a character of publishing content. So I want to mention that social media is a tactic. Um, it is not your marketing strategy. We talk about it and, and dedicate a whole lesson to it um, because that's the world we live in, right? But remember when I mentioned, and I think in lesson three, about how it takes nine times for people to see your brand before they're moved to action? Well, social media is a great way to get people to see your brand nine different ways or more before they come into uh, your gallery and purchase art or, or before they come and see a theater production or dance production um, or whatever it is, again, that um, you're doing with your creative offering. This next slide, I think, drives home the idea of using social media to expand your brand. Uh, again, going back to that nine times rule. It, it is nine times in marketing. Um, if you were a nonprofit and you're fundraising, where you're really looking at more like 12 times. So um, uh, using social media and partnership with other types of marketing is even more effective. So again, making sure that you have a website presence, driving people to that website, once you get to know your patrons and you, you have a patron base or people that you can mail to, um, mailing them um, pieces of information that also includes your social media information is really important. It's one of the things that we've really started you know, making sure that we do as an organization is having um, our social media um, on our printed materials as well, not just out there somewhere living in the digital universe, but how can people find us? And we even have our social media on our contact page on our website. So if you're looking at our contact page, not only can you figure out how to email a staff member at C4 Atlanta or what our phone number is or directions to our space, but you're also going to be able to find out how to get to our Twitter page, our Facebook page, our Snapchat feed and, and other um, I think Instagram is the other one that we have as well. Um, the other thing about social media, not just where people are, you know, taking that information that you gathered about, you know, your your target audience, but also um, thinking about your creative offering. So if you're a photographer um, and you use Instagram, that's a great place to um, to to let people know about your work. Um, visual artwork's really great on Instagram. Um, if you have a social cause or social piece to your work, using Twitter is great for that. And Twitter is how a lot of us learn about news immediately. Um, Pinterest is very visual. Uh, my 18-year-old daughter loves Pinterest and has several different pens. And in fact, one of her boards that she has on Pinterest is ideas. She calls it ideas for daddy. So, you know, her father, my husband, likes to make a lot of different crafts and things. And so she has a whole board dedicated to him on ideas that he can do um, in terms of his own art making. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of different possibilities in social media. Um, and again, don't feel overwhelmed. You don't have to focus on all of them today. But it is important to know which 
platform works best for what. So on that note, we're going to take a little bit of time to explore some of the major uh, profile platforms. Again, they're all different. They have different um, uh, opportunities uh, to be unique um, and to reach people and engage them in different ways. So Facebook, it's the most popular one. <laughs> You know, whether you like it or not, whether your your cousin or your long lost friend from high school is driving you crazy with their political views, if Facebook still has a very important um, uh, a very important purpose in um, in what we do in terms of marketing our brand, um, it, it it does offer low cost marketing options. Um, you can run ads and, and boost posts. So um, there's two different ways that you can run an ad on the side. So if you're going to Facebook, you'll see all these little ads pop up. So you can go as you know your brand today and set up an ad that will target people within that geographic demographic. You can target people by um, behavior. So what do they like? What are their interests? Um, and, and you can um, not pay a lot of money for it. Now again, a lot of us may have zero dollars, in which case that's not an option for you. So my suggestion is when you're looking at something like Facebook, think about it like your other pieces of art. You're curating content for it. You're thinking about what what is, is germane to your mission, what goes along with your mission and your aesthetic and your artwork, and use that to put interesting posts, interesting images, interesting videos on your Facebook page. Sometimes um, there, are, there are weaknesses with Facebook. I mean, let's be real. Um, it is always changing. <laughs> and that goes back to the idea there's no such thing as a social media expert, right? I mean, there's always some new article about how it's changing. But, um, but Facebook is a business. And at the end of the day, um, they also don't want to bombard people with spam. Because the minute people start getting spam um, uh, posts and, and it's not things that they really like, then people will stop using Facebook. And Facebook doesn't want that, right? It takes time to market effectively. It takes time to learn what people respond to. You know, we know after six years of being on Facebook, people really love um, messages about arts education. They love that. They even love a little bit of advocacy, a little bit of push, a little bit of um, resistance there, and people like that. Um, our audience also sometimes like, likes a nod to pop culture. Don't be afraid of pop culture um, if it's, it, as long as it's relevant to what it is that you're doing. So, for example, if there's something going on in the music industry where musicians are, uh, are, are complaining or upset with something like Spotify or some of these other platforms and it affects the way artists earn money, we share that because that, that is pop culture, but it's also of interest to our mission and end because it's of interest to our mission, it's of interest to the people who follow our page. Twitter. So Twitter is real-time communication, and, and I think sometimes people forget about that. If you think about you know only being able to use, and I, I think this may be changing now, but um, at the time that this was made, you could use 140 characters within a tweet, right? But if you think about um, the average sentence you know, if, if in, in a conversation, I'm going to spew out 140 characters, you're going to spew back 140 characters. We're having a conversation. Twitter is, is used uh, is well when you're interacting with somebody. We've met donors through Twitter. We've um, engaged uh, artists through Twitter. We like to share articles through Twitter. Um, and we like to comment on things uh, through Twitter. Again, it's about having uh, relevant conversations. Hashtags um, confuse people sometimes, but hashtags uh, can be can be um, can be used for a couple of different purposes on Twitter. Um, one of the uh, um, hashtags that's used in Atlanta is the hashtag, the little number sign that you have on your keyboard. That's a hashtag. Um, hashtag ATL arts. Um, so what you can do is on Twitter, you can actually search that hash hashtag. There's a little search option. And if you type in hashtag ATL arts, it'll show you all of the tweets that have that hashtag in it. So it's a, it's a great way to sort of tag what it is that you're doing. It's kind of appending data to your, your tweet. It's like going to the library 
and um, and knowing that you're going to go look in um, the young adult fiction section because it's been tagged with that metadata that um, lets you know where to go. Twitter is kind of the same way. It's a search. It's a search feature. The other way that hashtags are used is sometimes to be a little bit snarky or a little bit funny um, or have um, or, or drive home a point. So you could be like hashtag this weather is horrible. Well, that might not be something that's that everybody searches, but that's a, if you're if you're um, tweeting about the weather, you're giving emphasis by making a hashtag for it. There's little structure on Twitter compared to um, some of the other platforms. It can be overwhelming. If you're only sending out one tweet a day, you're wasting your time. It's an ongoing thing. Um, so, you know, we probably as an organization tweet tw 10, 12 or 20 times a day. Um, and that's okay because the feed goes so quickly, you're not really overwhelming anybody. Um, but you do find that um, people start following you through Twitter. One thing that we noticed one month, and it was a, I think it was an anomaly, but it was really interesting, is that we when, when we went back and looked at our Google Analytics, we had a lot of people coming from Facebook, but they weren't staying, um, they weren't staying on our website for very long. But Twitter users, on average, were spending over two minutes, in some cases, four minutes on our website. Why is that significant? Because in two minutes, I can purchase something on your website. In four minutes, I can find out a lot of information about your brand and register for a class, you know, in, in the case of C4 Atlanta. Just some interesting things to think about. So next we're going to talk a little bit about Instagram and, and this is one platform a lot of our artists have a, um, a lot of questions about. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I typically, me, Jessica, tend, uh, I tend to use um, uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook more personally, but I, I see um, immense possibilities with something like um, Instagram. And, and just like um, Twitter, the, the hashtag is really important in Instagram. So some of the best uses for Instagram, um, it's ideal for products that visually stand out and perfect for artists. Um, thanks to the hashtag, it's a great platform for connecting to new users because people um, search those hashtags um, or they come up in their feed and they learn new information about you. Um, images uh, that could use or require more descriptions, Instagram is great for that. Um, it doesn't work well for posts that are urgent in nature. Again, Twitter's great for that. Even Facebook is, is becoming great for that as well. It only works well for sales if you're um, selling a visual product. So for us, it probably isn't the best platform to try to sell a class or a service. But one of the things that we do use Instagram for is to celebrate our own artists. And so we take pictures of them in a class or with us or at a show, or if we're out, we happen to see some public art, then we um, like to promote that. So again, it's not driving direct sales for us like maybe um, Facebook would, um, but it is in, in strengthening and increasing our brand and, and the impact of our mission. So social media in conclusion, and I'm sorry I couldn't spend uh, more than just a, some moments really on social media, but um, if I were to go through every single platform and do demos and things like that, um, I probably would overwhelm you or we'd end up down a rabbit hole. I will say from time to time, C4 Atlanta does do um, social media classes that really dig into a lot uh, more of this. We're talking about three hour workshops where we can really get dirty in this um, but um, for the purposes of this aim light, it's just not something that we can really um, dive into um, without taking up a lot of time. So social media, again, it's just a tactic. You need a strategy to kind of put, put all of those tactics together. You know, um, you think about um, playing a soccer game or, or playing sports um, of any kind, you, you may have like an overall strategy for how you're gonna win the one game and then you deploy different tactics as the game goes on. And if something doesn't work, then you change tactics. Social media, just a tactic. It's not your strategy. Your marketing strategy is gonna be based on a lot of different things. The fundamentals of marketing, uh, it's gonna be based on looking at your target marketing and then it's gonna be based on um, really more importantly, how to reach your audience and where to reach them and how to message to them. 
set aside some time for your social media, but don't let it overwhelm you. I, I got some great advice from somebody once about some social media, and that is if you think about you know how um, people may have begun the day reading the daily newspaper, well, set aside maybe 10 minutes in the morning for going through you know your social media, looking at your Twitter account, looking at all of these different things. There are some social tool or social media tools that you can use like Hootsuite and some other, um, that, which are great. And they work for basically Hootsuite. It helps you plan your social media. So if you just look at Hootsuite, um, just Google that and, and you can look at it for yourself. It, it's got kind of a free version and then sort of a paid version. My only caution is that people want to link each social media platform to each other. So what I mean by that is I may um, post something on Instagram and then it immediately posts to Twitter and it immediately posts to Facebook. Well, going back to the beginning of this presentation, that's not always a good idea. Sometimes you want to tweak the message for the audience, especially if you're using something like Snapchat which or, or, or another um, content manager like um like a blog or a micro blog, you're not gonna you're gonna have a younger audience there, and 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 they're not gonna um, necessarily want to receive the same message that you have for a different audience. They may, and I don't want to make a judgment or an assumption, but those are some things I think that um, people found out in marketing. It's not about changing your message, and again, it's not about changing your artwork. It's about communicating your artwork in the best way possible so you build understanding and trust between people. Stay true to your art. Stay true to your art. Remember, just like marketing, social media is about conversations and it's about relationships. Remember that mate that we're trying to get? That's what this is about. Being present for that mate uh, that we want to uh, woo into marriage. Um, be genuine. Be authentic. Don't be campy or, or cheesy or disingenuous and definitely always tell the truth and be honest. Um, and people will respond to that. Uh, they'll respond to that. It, we live in a society now where on social media, people will call BS quickly if something isn't true. We think about um, a political campaigns. We see this all the time. Somebody says something and if it's wrong or seems weird or isn't factual, they get called out quickly. So I want to thank you. Thank you for spending this time with me. We've gone through three lessons of just an overview of, of marketing. This has been AIM Light. If you're interested in, in learning more about C4 Atlanta, visit us at, uh, online at um, c4atlanta.org. We are always happy to have people come and visit us. If you want to email us, email us at Action Team. That's Action Team at c4atlanta.org. Um, and we'll make sure that it gets to the appropriate person to answer your question. So this presentation was designed to give you a clear understanding of how to effectively market your creative offering. And again, effective is defined as marketing that generates results and has the potential to lead to sales. Now, I don't think that after this particular presentation, you're going to go and, and have your entire art career changed. But I, I hope that at the very least, it gives you some things to think about. These presentations are for you to look back at um, and keep. Um, and so if you want to find out more information, take a class, go online, do some research, or connect with us. Thank you again, and I want to say again thank you to the National Endowment for the Arts Artworks uh, Granting Program for helping make AIM Light possible. Enjoy the rest of your day.